Rale mara ne si mama nasi, rale mani kumani si. Oh, there is a deliverance for every flesh that is in us. <clears throat> oh, there is a deliverance for every flesh that is in us. Oh, there is a balm, a balm in Gilead to heal us of every worldliness, to take completely every unrighteousness from us, to deliver us from every transgression and from every iniquity, so that iniquity will not ruin us. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, Kamusi la Paranasa how oh, I wish humanity can know that the greatest enemy of our soul is not the devil, but our flesh. The greatest obstacle <clears throat> uh, holding us, making us lag behind in our true spiritual stature is ourself. I'm here to see that man that can rise above himself that can rise above is the stature of his humanity, that can rise above his, 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 his weak spot. Through the mercies of God, he can help us. Help can come for us, but it is only when we cry. Come on now. When we cry and cry to him for full deliverance our eyes are on you Lord because there is the heart of man that is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things who can know it oh that part of life is a part that nobody wants to talk about it is a part that is so dark it is a part that is so dangerous to tread when the heart begins to query a man, when you begin to evolve right before your eyes, and you begin to ask yourself, even with everything that I know in God, do I still have this capacity to do this wickedness? Oh, Ali Baranasaya, if you know how you can cry today, if you know how you can call on the name of the Lord to deliver you from yourself, Oh, my Lord and my Father, cry out in any way you can. David, a man after God's heart, got to this dimension. Oh, he saw the superfluity of his naughtiness right from the heart of a man that is after God, devising means to take another person's wife and not even stopping at that, going to a point where he would, he would plan the death of this man. And oh, he crossed the line. The heart honed him. The heart locked him up. The heart, the darkness of that heart came to him. In the day where kings go to war, he was found roaming on the rooftop. And he saw what highs, oh, what highs shouldn't see in the days of battle. And he stood to a point where his heart owned him. And a man after God's heart, oh, looked down on himself and said, oh, I can walk, I can, I, so I have the capacity and the ability to plan this thing out from start to finish. Nothing is even breaking my heart. Nothing is even holding me back. Oh, but the point where God could not overlook the legality of everything before him will be weighed. He looked at it and hell cried, Kaya, and heaven looked and said, oh, who did who did David go to in seeking assistance to carry out this dimension? If he had kept the, 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 the bad spot within the family, it would have been okay. 
but you went to deploy and employ the sword of one of the seven enemies of God, the Ammonites, to kill the Hittite that is more Jewish than a Jew. And God had to rise from his judgment seat to say, no, this sin will not go unvisited. Oh, Nathan, rise. Go and meet David and give him this parable from heaven. There was a man, very rich in cattle, had everything that eyes and hand could take. But no, he wouldn't stop there. He went for just one, one, one lamp of a poor man. And David said, no, that man must fail the route of the law. And Nathan said, you are the man. Come on now, you are the man. And David, David, for the first time, he sat there and he listened to the verdict that came from heaven. You, David, I took you from the sheep. I took you from the slaughter. Man. I took you from, from nowhere. And I lifted you up. Tolu, you can look for that verse for me. I, I lifted you up. And you sat there, and you, I gave you your master's wives. I gave you, uh, if, he, if he was too small, come on now. Was God saying that he is, he is, he is supporting a, a, a David to go, and, uh, to go after promiscuity? No, he was saying you shouldn't have employed the sword for my enemy. You shouldn't have gone to that extent. That is the heart of man. That is the extent to which the heart can drive a man. It can drive a man mad. And if God has shown you mercy and he has given you mercy, he can begin to make you see what your heart is capable of doing. Oh, he can make you see it even when you have not done it. Have you ever been in that position? Have you found favor before God that God will begin to bring the Inner, inner dimension of your heart. He begin to bring it before you so you can see that, wow, so I have the capacity to do this evil. Peter. Oh, Peter. Oh, the took me to the spot where Peter, where Peter denied Jesus. Over the week, they took me to that place. And I sat in that place. And I saw how that man struggled. He did everything. He cried. What was the main tears that came from his eyes? The main tears that came from the eyes of Peter was not because he denied Christ, was not because what Christ eventually said came to pass. The major reason was in his heart, he was saying, what was the difference between what I just did now and what Judas Iscariot did? What was the difference? Judas, I hear, is dead in the field of a caldema, a field of blood. Oh, I saw where Peter was weeping when he betrayed the Lord. The question he was asking himself that led to the tears was, Jesus, what I did was not different from what Judas Iscariot did. Why did you pray for me? Oh, come on now. Why did you pray for me? Peter, you will deny me three times. He said, no, I will not. No, 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 I will not deny you. There is nothing that you say, I will not deny you. It is even more pathetic that this was the man that when Jesus was asking, who do men say? Who do men say I am? <clears throat> Some said you are Jew, Jeremiah. Some said you are Isaiah. Some said you are this. Some said you are that. And then he turned to them and said, who do you say I am? Oh, and the revelation of God's dimension that God has helped Andrew to show to Peter before now. Because it was Andrew. Andrew was the first person that saw him. Andrew, the disciple of John, if you follow that story very well, that immediately the, 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 the Messiah was shown and the baptism took place in Jordan. Immediately that thing happened. What all major, the, the key disciple of, of John followed Jesus. 
And Andrew was one of them. He said, oh, can I know where you live? He said, come. And it was all so denied they couldn't sleep. I could see in the spirit that Jesus was showing him that I am the Messiah. And Andrew left and called Peter and showed Peter, said, we have found the Messiah, the Christ. That revelation was further expounded in the spirit of Peter. And an articulation was given to him. Dimension was given to him in his spirit to come and stand before Jesus to make it clear that you are the Christ. And Jesus said, yes, you know that you are the Christ. Flesh and blood has not revealed to me, this to you. And on this realization of truth, come on now, on this dimension of truth that is of God, that God cannot lie, on this dimension that I have come to give eternal life to man, I will build my church not your four walls, not your domes. I will build my own church, not the one that you call your own and you say they can't open for one hour, they can't open for 50 minutes because of COVID virus. Not because not your church that you have, you have chased out the Holy Spirit and you have, and you have planned him out of your, of, your, of your circle. Not your church. Not your rubbish church. That even the archbishop cannot, 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 cannot walk righteously in the pattern that a common disciple walked in the days, in the days of Jesus. It was a common disciple that opened the eyes. Our archbishop cannot even open eyes, cannot even pray. It's, it's, things, are, things are so bad. There is no regard for, for, for the church anymore because we have, we have sponsored children that are monsters in government. They've stolen, they've looted, they've, they, they've written fat checks to build domes, to build cathedrals. They've paid time an offering that have blocked us away and taken us to a place that is very strange. And Jesus said on this, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail. And Jesus started talking in that dimension of, 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 of truth as Christ. He started bringing out and expounding what must happen to him. And immediately, the same man that caught that dimension, how do you enter into two different streams at the same time? Come on. How do you, maybe it has not happened to you before. You know, you people, you are too holy. Me, I say it as it is. How do you, how do you sense God right now? How do you sense God and the next minute? You are insane. How do you how do you speak in tongues and you sing acutely without even thinking twice? How do you do that? Come on, how do you do that? That was the dimension that Peter was operating. Honestly, in a dimension of an unbelieving saint, how do you become a saint and you are an unbelieving saint? He said, Jesus, <laughs> you are not going anywhere. Jesus, you will not go and die. What are you talking about? You are a Messiah. I've just spoken now that you are the Christ. Jesus said, God, come on, you don't get this thing. You don't get this thing. Peter, you will deny me three times. And he said, me, I will not. Ah, the first time, it happened. The second time, it happened. By the third time, it was a girl, a small girl that said, oh, this man's face is familiar. He looks to me like this is one of the disciples. He said, woman! When fear gripped his heart, he called a girl a woman. And I saw by the mercies of God where I was taken to see where Peter was weeping. His tears was, I could have been Judas Iscariot. Jesus, why did you pray for me? For he ever lives to make intercession for us, according to Hebrew chapter 7, verse 25. But you also must cry. You must cry. God, deliver me from myself. Come on. Men that have reason to show true revival in the true essence of it are men that are delivered from themselves. I was taken to the place where the saints that have gone ahead, where they were. As I landed in that dimension of their own heaven, they beckoned on me to come. And I saw them. And they said, sit down, we want to show you why true revival did not happen in our days. While true revival that started was hijacked the moment it started. And I sat down. 
They said, number one, it was greed that killed us. We were greedy. Lord, help everyone here today to handle what is coming out. Said greed. We were even competing amongst ourselves. We were so greedy. When, 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 when wealth was released, because of this true revival, people were healed. Great testimonies. People were delivered from the jaws of the devil. Oh, and, and, and the colonial masters came to us. They, they, they dangled carrots before us. They did everything and, 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 and at various times of our staying on earth, we caved into grief. We caved in. And he said, the second thing was ego. That in those days of their fathers, when, when they served their God, the God of Ugun, when they served the Obatala, when they served the God of the, of, 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 of the black, 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 dark world, they will say that the Spirit entered into them and they are filled and they will start demonstrating. They said to me that that was how ego took over them. That ego took over them to a point that they were competing among themselves. And when I get, go down and go and look for, for Babalola, wherever Babalola does is uh, did 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 them um, 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 crusade, he will go to that spot and conduct his own crusade and he will he will prove to everybody that is more powerful than Babalola. To what end? It was ego that was holding them. And they said the third thing was hard. When they got to this one, I cried. They said hey, that they still wanted to be alive. You see, no man, no man can come to God and not die if he wants to be a living sacrifice. To be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before God, you must pass out. Except a, a grain of, 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 of wheat falls to the ground. Except a grain of corn falls to the ground. Except a seed falls to the ground. And die. He cannot. The way up is down. For Jesus got to, 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 to rise above every principality and power. And before you rest, resurrected, come on, sleep another strong man. He has to die, he has to be on the on the threshing floor. Down, he will be checked. Through. There will be no blemish before him, but he must be dead. He cannot be alive. Are you all hearing me? Are you all hearing me? I want to be sure that you are hearing me. Thank you. Thank you for this feedback. Thank you very much. I wanted to be sure that I'm not breaking. Because these are things that are very crucial for us to hear today. They took me to, into a trance, in a trance. And I saw how a lamb is brought to the slaughter. 
that that lamb must die before it can be examined, before it can be acceptable. That was why Jesus had to do that role play. He had to come down to die before it can be examined. The examination happened when the day turned to night, the first day, the second day, and the third day, he, he, he passed every every dimension. He who knew, knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be the righteousness of him in Christ. And he was examined, and he, 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 he scaled through, and he rose again. Hallelujah. But this father, they told me, when, I, when they, I saw that trance, I came back into their own trance to, saw, to see them, and they said to me, and they said to me, thank you, Tolu, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it produces much fruit. The way up is down. And they said to me, have you seen? Have you seen? Have you seen? Have you seen what is happening? Did you see that lamp? I said, yes, sir. I saw it in trepidation. And they said, look at us. We did not want to lose our identity. We, do, we did not want to lose our, our frailty. We did not want to die. They said some of them, when God even came, come, came to them, God came to them face to face and said, friend, the true revival that I've given to you, you must die to yourself. They themselves turned to God and said, God, we will not die. Oh, because it is not easy to die. They screamed, the one that paid me the most. They showed me one of them. Oh, a popular name. And when he was, he was in his prime, building the tabernacle on earth, heaven visited him and said to him, you are not building this pattern according to what we give you in heaven. And he said, yes, I know. But I cannot go back to tell the people that I am wrong. I will leave it like that. And they said to him, heaven said to him, if you leave it like this, by the time you die, you will not be remembered. All your works will be burnt completely by fire. But because of what we have invested in you, it will be against the nature and the righteousness of God for hell to receive you. Listen to me very well. It will be against the nature of God for hell to receive you because of the divine investment. And by sovereignty of God, we have decided that we will save you but your works will be dead. Because any work that is, that is not according to the pattern of righteousness will die. It will fade off. It will not be inter indelible in time. And this man of God said, yes, he accepts. He accepts. This thing that he's building, he's building it with tears, sweat, and blood. This is his revival. This is his struggle. You know how you, you plant a church and you and you and you and you pride in the fact that you plant a church. Are you still hearing me? I don't want to lose anybody. You pride in the fact that yes, I've, I've, I've planted a church. Yes, these are my sons. These are my daughter. This is my tithes. This is my offering. This is my money. This is my treasury. This is my this, this is my dad. And everyone left him. And when he died, all his works were gone. When he got to the gate of heaven, when the role was played to me, because as they were telling me the story, they were showing me, when he got to the gate of heaven, the angel said, this place is a place where men cry. Contrary to popular opinion, and heaven is full of joy, he will wipe their tears, which means they will cry. Come on now. He said, God in his sovereignty has decided to receive you into glory, not because of your works, but because of his righteousness. And the man was in tears. As at the time that they were showing me that dimension, he was still in tears. Why? Because he was seeing those on earth that defended all the teaching that he taught them, not knowing that what those guys were defending were false. How many times have you fought for the things that are not true and you did not know because of the foundation that taught you?
Oh, when I got to that point, I wept. And they said, these are the reasons why true revival died in our hands. We were the very people that killed the revival before it started. And they said, some of them being here, they did not deserve it. They look at the work that they've done. All of the works are, are gone. The churches they planted, they've taken it over. The, 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 the places where they called the power of God down, they've turned it to a museum. I wept. And do you know what was shocking? They now showed me those that had crown. Come on now. Those that had crown. When you say crown, oh my God. Crown that, <laughs> those that could trump such crowns were, were in the category of elders. Amen. There were people that had no church, people that labored for the souls, people that labored to pray, people that prayed secretly for their pastors, people that supported true revival, people that had no name at all. Why? Because men got to the point where they couldn't be delivered from themselves. Man is the greatest enemy that our cap we, we have the cap capacity of being <laughs> of, of, of being taken over by our heart. There are still some dark spots in our lights that God must find out no more excusing our weaknesses with scripture. No more, no more. When the Father says, be holy, as your heavenly Father is holy, it is not archived away. That portion of the scripture is still available, is still alive. You have no excuse. God will not reduce his standard for this generation or for any generation for that matter. We will have to raise our banner. Hallelujah. And you know, men still come down to the earth. That was what they said to me. I had this experience a few days ago. And I was in my study and they came. And they said, can you see us? I said, yes, I can see you. I stood up. They were in full regalia. A regalia of a general. And they came and they stood. And they said, go tell my people that we are tired of coming to the earth unnoticed. We come around them and they don't know us. They don't even hear us. We want to enjoy their fellowship. We want them to enjoy our fellowship, but they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't access us. And I said, sir, can you tell me why? Please teach me, teach me. I am one of them. Teach me. They said, quiet in their very stern manner. They came with judgment. I wanted to move closer to them and say, if you move close, stand where you are. I stood. And they said, on your knee. I went on my knee. And they said, listen. Our people have believed lies. Our people they don't believe the scriptures again. They don't believe in God anymore. They are, they are, they are spiritual senses are not alive. They are accessing God with their five senses instead of accessing God with three senses. They are seeing eyes. They are hearing ears and they are understanding art. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that says, eyes have not seen nor hear her, nor have entered into the heart of man, the same heart that is corrupt, the same heart that is terrible, the same heart that, that has believed lies, what God has for his own people. We have heard many, many lies. They were telling me how we don't believe in God anymore. 
how we believe in our in our logic how we believe in our in our in our in our brain how we believe in our in our in our reasoning how we rate what men say and we can die for the statement of man man's words that when weighed in the spirit they lack they lack every weight that matter thank you to look but as it is written I has not seen, no ears have heard, no have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And they say to me, fear had grieved the heart of people. Because there is a nature, there is an environment in heaven. When, when, when they come down to the earth, they told me that when they come down to the earth, when they want to greet us, they say, fear not. That is their greeting. Like in Yoruba, when Yoruba says, Monkyo, Monkyo, Obankyo, fear not. It's our people, they are so soaked in fear. They believe lie. They, 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 they quit being children. They are adults. They are adult in every sense of it. So they cannot enter into the kingdom. They have, no, they have lost their way. Even though they are speaking in tongues, they said many times they will come. Angels will come around. They will enter. They will want to talk. But these people will not hear. The reason is the, 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 the location, the environment of the two forces differ. So the angels, are you hearing me very well, please? Are you hearing me, please? I don't want to lose anyone. The angels will, they will be talking, they will bring, they will bring news. You have prayed, you have prayed, and they brought answer, but they want to commune with you. They want you to hear their voice, but you cannot. You cannot. Why? Because your environment is still low. The frequency of your environment, the energy around your environment is not powered by joy. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that joy, when it's, that's the, that is what powers the energy of heaven. And when this angel angels come they come with that dimension and when they come with that dimension they want you also to be at the same frequency but you you have not activated your spiritual senses why because you are still very much alive you don't want to die you don't want to lose your identity you don't want to you don't want to be delivered from yourself you have excused and and and, and excused your weaknesses no man is holy every man is unrighteous everyone has his own even me i have my own so you 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 kaya 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 so you do so you will rescue god the one i've done is even enough i have tried ah it's not me that killed Jesus. Ah, it's not me. I beg, I beg, I beg. I have tried. Ah, I can't. I, I, I have to enjoy myself now. Being a Christian does not mean that I will not be. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. So we have been in that environment where angels and elder saints, when they come down to the earth, they cannot communicate with us because we are not our capacity inside of us and outside of us cannot, cannot work at their frequency. Their frequency is, is the frequency of Christ, far above principalities and powers. But because our senses, our, our, our five senses is jamming the frequency of our three senses in the spirit. So that jam is happening. That's the reason why you will jump from being spirit to flesh. That's why you, you will not be stable because you have not been winged. You have not been delivered from yourself. And you don't see it as a, as a priority. You don't see it at all. That is even the most painful thing. You don't even see it. He said, we want to talk to them and see them. As we see the world we live in, we must be more real. We must be more real. We must be more real. We have believed lies. We have believed lies. The only thing that the power of God is available for now is to heal headache. Is to heal headache. That's what we call miracle. Oh, Lord God Almighty. And they looked at me and they said to me, Oh, go and hold monthly, monthly healing and a uh, 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 meeting every month from now. And they gave me the date, specifically second Friday of every month for the next three months. They said, we will show to everyone that the power of God is alive. We will show to everyone in your meeting that the power of Jesus is not relegated to charade. It's not relegated to all, 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 all the gimmicks. Oh, that there is power in God. 
So starting from now, you will be seeing us frequent every second Friday of every month. Oh, we just want to show. Oh, God wants to show his real power right from his presence to heal and to deliver so that we will not, we will not believe lies anymore, so that we will develop our, our spiritual senses. We will not reason from who, uh, really, is, is, is it God that is talking to me? Is it the devil that is talking to me? They said that was the one that even, 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 sub, you know, even, he, he taught them apart. That taught them apart. A child of God will be saying, I don't know, something said, so what is that thing? If it's not the spirit of God, get out of the kitchen. Coke is Coke, Fanta is Fanta. Why do you have identity crisis? And I asked them, I said, sir, one last question, sir. Why do you come here? They said, ha, 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 wise boy. We will show you why we come here. We come here because there are men that have passed through this earth that have raised more than ego. They have raised more than pupits. They have raised more than sons. They've raised altars. And the altars that they've raised, they've called the covenant of the everlasting God into that, into that altar, into that land, into that place, that we are bound by that covenant to come and watch over those places on earth. Those places where there are indelible covenant sign of God. He now said what is more surprising is that the believers in this age, they don't even know these places. Come on now. They said they don't even know the places. And they told me, why do you think that Jacob saw us? Why do you think that Jacob, Jacob was always seeing us at every point in time? I said, I don't know, sir. Please teach me. And he said, his grandfather raised more than podium. He raised more than pupils. He raised more than don'ts. He raised more than sons. He raised altars. Altars that are living. Altars that were still alive. The stones of some of the altars, they still bore witness to the covenant. The energy of the, air, of the strength of God. The prime from heaven entered into those stones and made indelible landmark in nature such that when his grandson, oh, come on, Lord Jesus, when his grandson just tumble upon that place, heaven, bah, open. Come on, heaven open. Hey, and the son saw them for the first time. He saw them. He said, hey, 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 hey. So this place that I was just peeping, I didn't know how many times you would think where you are praying is ordinary place. I laugh at people. You would you would, you would desecrate where you are praying. You would you will have you will have no regard to where you are praying. You will not is the same bedroom you are praying, very dirty place. You are not taking care of it, you are not doing anything. You have to change your ways. And have regard. How many times you would think you, you even stand in the place of your prayer, you would you, you would have unbelief, unbelief, all littered in you, unbelief, lies, 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 unbelief, all lit. You don't believe in the word you are reading because you believe the lies, you believe the lies that the devil has given to you, that there is problem, that you have tribulation, that you have trial, that Nigeria is tough, Nigeria is hard, is even good for, for me to go to Canada, is even good. I'm not saying it's, it's bad for you to go to Canada, you can go if you want to go, but you see, you begin to put all this permutation you begin to your prayers are motivated by fear not by faith so that when you say abba father you don't say abba father from the point of adoption you say abba father from the position of fear And what you don't know is that the heavenly bodies have been waiting for you in the place of prayer. They wait for you, only for you to come and display your, your, your high level of unbelief before the Father. 
And at that point, they said to me, that boy just entered into that place and stumbled into that place. And for the first time, the frequency of the boy was upgraded when Tolu was praying that we will come out, we will come out, we will come out, we will come out. I say, wow, God, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. I didn't discuss anything with her. The energy of that guy stepped up immediately and Jacob came up to that frequency and he did not see angel descending and ascending. No, he saw them ascending first and descending. And there was a ladder. Come on now. There was one of us that dreamt about ladder three times and I've sent the message to you. Come on now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Because Christ is the ladder that connected the covenant of the altar to God. And it was speaking from above having energy from that place. And he started talking. And he started talking to Jacob. And when Jacob came out of that dream, he said, this, 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 come on, Tolu, bring it up for me. This is the gate of heaven. Oh, God is here. And I did not know. How many times do you know that God is in your place of prayer and you do not know at all? How many times? He told me that men from heaven still come down to the earth. It is our responsibility to be delivered from ourselves to a point where we will go from building pupils, from raising voices, from being a superstar, to raising sons, from raising sons, through raising nations, to raising altars. If Abraham had not raised altars, Jacob wouldn't have found the God of Abraham, his father. Jacob wouldn't have found. After that time, Jacob started seeing company of angels. There was a place, he just saw them going. I think it was in Genesis chapter 22. He just saw them going like this. Company of angels, Mahanaim. He just saw them go, oh my God. Hey, Baba Runasaya. Sometimes when I tell you that I, 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 if I am in my kitchen, my kitchen, my kitchen, I will just see them going. Ah, ah, see them, see them going. In troops. They say to me, ha, ah, we are going to a place of covenant. There is a place that we are watching over. Oh, and we don't know those places here. We don't know those places here. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gates of heaven. They still come here. They still come here. They still come here. They still come here to watch over the living covenant. While I was sharing this with my friend, he said, oh, our apostle friend had an experience. And I said, share it with me. He said, many years ago, he left Nigeria and he went to um, Israel. Um, he went in the convoy of state government. And so he was chosen as captain to put everybody in the hotel and all that. So he was so tired. And while he was in his hotel room, very tired, he just said, ah, this is Israel. Let me, let me, this is Jerusalem. Let me pray. Let me speak some words. Let me pray. And as he was praying and praying and praying, he fell asleep. And while he fell asleep, come on now. While he fell asleep, he said he saw 25 massive angels. And they dragged him out of his sleep. And he said, you cannot come and sleep here. Come and we'll show you the dimension that you don't know. This land that you are. For over 3,000 years, we have been here guiding and guarding this place. And the highest of the Lord is here. And he said to them, why is this not in Africa? Why, is, why are you people not in Nigeria? And he said, how many of your generals have raised enough altars? for us to come and watch over. This was many, many years. What is there for us to watch over? Before you start saying Nigeria is bad, Nigeria is bad. When you have high, high level, when you have men of honor, men of honor, 
Honor is not cheap. That they, 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 they major in raising altar for God. Angels will come into that country. There is no way that country will not be good. There is no way. There are forces that are behind this thing. Don't deceive yourself. If you think his economy is what is whatever, all those things that you are thinking, inflation, nonsense, it, no. Go and mark my word. A righteous man will one, one, one day be the president of this country and all the debt of this country will be paid from the same country. All the debt will be paid because there are so many mineral resources that God has tied down for that righteous man and righteous men and women to ascend. When the wicked are still there, for as strong as the zeros are still there pretending to be heroes, these, these, these mineral resources will be shut down by God. When a righteous man ascends, these resources will be available. And out of the ashes of our dying today, we will begin to pay our debts. And men and women will come. They will come and collect permanent residency to live in Nigeria. Mark my word. It's not mine. It's the word of the Lord. And with these, I welcome you this evening to the authority of the remnants. Before I go into this, I will read one of the testimonies that we had. We've had a lot of them. I'm sorry, I, I really did not have time to read to reply. Um, a lot of great stuff that happened to the glory of God. I had a lot of healing. Um, um, <clears throat> Quite a lot, quite a lot, quite a lot. But there is this one that I couldn't take my eyes away from. He said, I had a dream that five of us, that there was five of us. We were a team and we had done something in the past. So we came back together to do it again. Now, I know as we went, there was a war. Listen very well. There was a war. But it wasn't just the five of us, but a bunch of us. The thing is that we all knew this war was going to happen, but nobody was ready. At least not on our side, the good people. The other people who were re well ready, the other people were well ready because when the call for war was made, they came out, but we refused to come out on our side. I remember I was trying to hand out weapons to the other people that were going to war, but it did not, it did not feel like my job. It felt like I was hiding behind, behind that to avoid going to war. The leaders were furious and kept shouting that we should go out for the war. <laughs> Come on now. I remember at one point going out with a bunch of people and people in front were killed and the other people ran out into the fields to hide. The elders, the leaders came out looking for us. I remember staying with another lady who, who her job was to sell food from a kiosk. So I was helping her take stock of the food when one of the leaders came to check. So she did not send me back to the field. So in a nutshell, this woman, this particular person was hiding still. Please follow me. This is the second time I am, I am having this dream of a team of five. And this time I thought this was the five-fold gift. I sense that as the army of God, we are not ready and instead of facing what we are called to do, we keep doing or trying to do our duty or the duty of others. For example, everyone wants to prophesy now. As much as we all want the gift of prophecy, a lot have to learn that they are not called to the office of a prophet. A war is coming and the enemy is ready and laughing at our face, but instead for us to prepare for the very gift God has given to us and sharpen our sword, we are confusing ourselves, trying to prepare for hours 
or for others and the gift of others and essentially not learning anything. Also, there are Christians who truly love God, but who don't believe in healing today. Are you hearing that? Hmm. Did we not talk about this before now? Or have faith for monetary things. They say it's not the basis um, for you to love God and you should and you should have no you should have no such expectation from God. And this preaching is wrong. According to her, she called them the secessionist. Also, different harm of Christians have different valid beliefs. But we need to come together as one and bring together the different dimensions God has revealed together, uh, revealed himself to us, instead of boxing God in and believing in one. God is building an army, and there are different teams. The one with sword, the one with bore, our eyes must be open to see this so that we can know our roles and take our place in the army. Is it very, very clear now? Am I very, very clear now? So this person um, had a revelation and saw that there was war. And many times I've said here that um, we are not prepared for what is coming. We don't even know. We have no clue what is, what is coming to hit us you know, as, as, as remnants, as Christians. And, and, and because of that, it's very difficult for us to actually know what, who, where, where we belong to, who we are in God. You see, every, in every army, there are, there, are, there are different battalions. There are different types. Whether old army, whether old army or new. Um, and I said to this woman, I said, you reminded me of many years ago when God showed me David for the first time. I saw how ruddy he was, how short he was, and how, you know, um, wonderful he was. But I, I also saw how Saul was. I saw how the, the, the battle went on between Saul and David. And then I saw both David and Goliath at the Valley of Ella. What was very clear to me was David's shoulders. I saw his shoulders, that his shoulders did more of the, of the, of the action. He did more of the action than the hand. Then I saw that his, his feet, his thigh was so, was so developed. I saw that his feet was very swift. So in that revelation, I was told that David was an archer. David was a foot soldier, something, somebody you can call a foot soldier, the soldiers that are on ground. There are some that they take aerial view. They, their own is to protect the, the, the soldiers on ground from any attack of the enemy, from the aerial viewing that they have. And they have a long range shoot that they can use to take out any threat against those that are foot soldiers. Do you understand what I'm saying? And there are some that their responsibility is to ensure that the wounded soldiers are fully treated. There are some that their responsibility is to ensure that they keep producing the artillery. Those are the teachers. They keep producing the artillery. They keep producing deep teachings, experiential teachings. And yet there are some, they call them the seer. You don't know them. They are the espionage. When it is time for God to do a definite assignment in a continent, God takes them on. God takes them into a corporation. God takes them into a company. They tear down that place with righteousness. They begin to set the captives free just by standing and saying no, just by not lying, just by not cheating, just by not turning zeros, just by not compromising. Those, that, those are espionages. Come on now. There are, these are dimensions that we do not know. So how do you enter into the full capacity? How do you prepare? That takes me to Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. Note this very well. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee. To the mountain, not 12, 11, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you, even the end of, to the end of the age. This was when the army was commissioned. This particular injunction was given to the disciples who became apostles and they passed it on and on and on till, it's in, till we have it in our hand now. Now I'm asking you, all oh remnants, now the faith is in your hand to defend. What are you going to do? The fathers are leaving the scene and it will be time for you to defend the faith that have fed you to this point. What are you going to do? When you do not know where you fall, it is very, very unfortunate that we are preparing for failure. We are preparing for failure. We know everything about the outward man. But we don't, we don't have this dimension and capacity. And in this truth, four things must happen to us before we can begin to ascend the dimension of authority. Let me make it very clear to you that authority is not power. <laughs> I will get there very soon. Authority is not power. Authority is not power at all. Be very, very careful if all you look for is power. <laughs> the 12 were given power to overcome all the powers of the enemy. But one of them betrayed Jesus. So you can have power and still betray Jesus. For every ammunition that an untrained child of God holds is and is a missile against his God. I will take that again. For every ammunition that an untrained child of God holds in his hand is, a, is an ammunition against God. It's a missile against God. Behold, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning the common salvation, I find it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the things which was once for all. Come on, Tolu, thank you. Which was once for all. Come on, once for all. Once for all. Remnants, you have no excuse. Either you stand in this army and you stand and know your place or you perish. You have no excuse. You cannot die on your head because they gave you everything. They, 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 they defended their lives for it. The, the, the fathers that you abuse, the ones that you abuse on social media, the ones that you curse, your pastor, those that labored over you, they've done their bit and they are going now and the podium is available for you. You must occupy till he comes. If you don't occupy, whoa, the title. Which was once for all, not for temporary time. Once for all, deliver to the saints. You see, the first thing you must know about this dimension is you must be delivered from everything that is called 666 in you. Every dimension of humanity from transgression to trespass to sin, to iniquity, you must be completely weaned of them. They are six. Number one, sensationalism. Number two, sensuality. Number three, sexuality. Number four, scandal. Number five, slander. Number six, strivings. We are too sensational. When a man hears the word of God and you hear him saying, mm, 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 you will think that that word is actually hitting the right chord. Only for that man to act who is, he truly is, then you will now doubt what he has believed all along. Right in the same place, people of God will go to church. 
hearing pastor preach it, hey, ooh, ah, 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 all manner of sounds. Just outside the church, they are flouting the rule. Traffic lights, they won't respect. Oh my goodness, I don't care what you what you have done mm -mm -mm to. I don't care what that thing is, that sensation that eats you. If it does not produce Christ in you, the hope of glory of this world, then you are doomed. Sensation. Sensation. Shaking. All those things. That when it's now time for you to act out what is made, what you are made up of, when it's time for you to act out what you are made up of, you now start out acting out things that are not in tandem with the word of God that you have listened to, for which you have said, mm, uh, I'm always afraid. When people have sensation and they are not changed, English does not change men. The best, the best preaching you have ever listened to, the most excellent preaching in speech cannot convert a soul. It is the power of God that changes man. Not English. Not dictionary. Sensation. Sensation. Oh, that man, he preached. Ah, he preached. Oh, my body was just shaking. Was just shaking. Was just shaking. When Christ is in you and the word, only one word, one word, one word, Isaiah heard, all his unclean limbs became clean. Hey, come on now. All his unclean limbs. How many words have you heard? How many have you heard? Oh, did he ball up at me? Sensuality. Everything that is inside of us will always be seen through our ability to communicate with our five senses much more than any other thing. We, 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 we crave for these things. We crave to see. We crave to hear. We crave to touch. Ah, come on now. We long for the words of men that are not true. Are you still hearing me? Am I still clear? We long. These are six, six, six signals. Sexuality. Everything must come down to, to that. Everything must come down to that. The greatest industry right now in the world is this there was a a christian crusade or a christian meeting a retreat that was held in a hotel and after that weekend the hotel in america said that weekend when the christians gathered in the hotel was the time that they had the highest visits to pornographic sites highest visits to pornographic sites Sexuality. Scandal. Because it will come along the line of our cravings. Said there is no smoke without fire. Scandal. It will just come, oh, this is what you, this, we heard that this person is doing this. Haven't we seen when you are delivered from yourself, when you are delivered from yourself, men will look for everything to hold against you, they won't find. Luke chapter 19, if I'm very, very correct. Luke chapter 19. When a spy become a righteous man. Luke chapter 20, rather. So they watched him. Who are the day? Let me go to verse 19. And the chief priests and the scribes. You see those that killed Jesus? The chiefs, uh, chiefs, chief, chief priests and the scribes. That very how sought to lay hands on him. But they feared the people. For they knew he had spoken this parable with them. So they, who are the day? The chief priests. They watched him sent spies who pretended to be righteous men that they might seize on his words. That's what Yoruba say. 
in order to deliver him to the power and the authority of the governor. Then he asked, they asked him, saying, Teacher, see how spies talk. They serve you flattery and you fall for it. Teacher, we know that you say and teach rightly and you do not show personal favoritism, but teach the way of God in truth. How many of us are falling for, oh, pastor, the way you preach, you touch me, you I, I'm always afraid. My prayer is always that God, may I not speak your word and at the same time I am deceived. That God will help me and help everybody listening to me that the words that you speak through me will not fall, but it will be a life-changing word. I want to see men changing by hearing the word of God from my mouth. Whether I build a dome or not, it's not my priority. I want to raise altar in men. I want to raise altar inside of men. But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, why do you test me? Come on now. <laughs> That's why there was no scandal about Jesus. There was nothing about him that could have scandal. Why? I will show you very soon. The next one, slander. Oftentimes, we will always see that dimension of ego rising in people that will slander ourselves. Every time you see man in any of these dimensions, you will know that it is 666 that is working inside of him. What is motivating you when you take a decision? Who motivates you? What, 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 what prompts you to do the things that you do? The last one, strivings. David got to a point, he said, for you have delivered me from the strivings of men. Uh, Tulu, if you can look at that, but please bring it up for me. See, that is the dimension that a child of God must get to. But I will not leave you comfortless, people. I will bring you to the place of deliverance. And that place of deliverance is in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 40 and verse 51. Very clear. These are the antidotes. You cannot hide from them. You cannot hide from them. Please, people, I may go beyond 7 o'clock. I'm begging you by the mercies of God. These things are not things that you just hear. They are things that you must understand fully. How we can rise to authority. I will show to you that authority is not power. The way to authority is having submission to God, is having steadfast, being steadfast in faith. To go through the process through trials, temptation, you will be in caves. You'll be prosecuted and persecuted at the same time. And at, this, and at that time, you are being built and your authority is being known to even principalities and power. What makes a general is the, is the, is the, is, is, is the fact that his is, 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 is uniform will not be new. His uniform will show sign that he's been hold. Scars. And the child grew and became strong in spirit. Yes, thank you, Allah Yoto. You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. You, made, you have made me the head of the nations. If people have not known, shall serve me. But before you get to that serving, you will be delivered from the strivings of people. And I declare that you will be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ, Allah Yoto. Um, 40, and the child grew and became strong in spirit. That's the first place. So to overcome sensationalism, people, you must be strong where it matters in the spirit. To overcome sensationalism, you must be strong in the spirit. You must go to God and you must open your spirit. You must tell him, oh Lord, open me up to you. Don't let this flesh be a stumbling block. I want your words in my spirit. I want to grow where it matters. Is this the spirit of man that sustains him in sickness? Anyone that has that Bible verse should bring it up. It is the spirit of man that determines whether a man will survive the sickness or not. It's not in uh, Panadol. It's not in Paracetamol. It's the spirit of man. Because there is a spirit in man. And the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. God is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Number two, 
The antidote for sensuality is the next one. After the child grew in spirit, he was filled with wisdom. Wisdom will make you to access the three senses than the five senses. Wisdom will make you to fall into the dimension of the hearing ears, seeing eyes, and understanding art, other than the five senses of, of logic, of, of brain. The Bible says the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? Can you see that? Can you see the dimension, how deep the dimension of the spirit is? We are not growing where it matters. We grow, we grow in weights. We had weights. We had bank account. We had house. We had everything. We had value to our body. We, you see, we do everything. We exercise so much, but we don't exercise the spirit. And somebody will be saying, hey, but I've been doing it, I've been doing it, I've been doing it. Can you compare the investment you've had in your body to the investment in your spirit? Please, can you compare? If you can compare and you know that the, the, the time that you have spent feeding your spirit man is higher than the time you have spent feeding your flesh, raise up your hand. I want to see you. You went to school. How many years of your life did you go to school? How many years of your life have you attended the school of the spirit? How many years? I'm not talking of I'm not talking of Bible school. How many years? How many hours have you locked yourself to pray? How many hours? You see, you can't you can't rise above your prayer life. You cannot. And that those are the places where you can't deceive yourself. That's why you see, on tell you about the legend before. It is what the bird hits that it, it that that it, that, that it uses to live. See, there is no there is no two ways to it. The bird flies on what it feeds. When he increased in wisdom, he didn't stop there. The grace of God was upon him. That is how you overcome sexuality. That's what, how the grace of God. And this is not the grace that makes you touch sin all the time. This is not the grace that makes you to be sinning and to be doing things, to be, to be, to be, to be, to be, to be deceiving yourself that, and, and excusing your weaknesses before God because you are single, because you are double. These are things that you have done. These are things that you are weak, you are weak, you are weak all the time. And you explain your whatever away and you help yourself in any manner. You can help yourself and then you come to God to, to speak in tongues and do all manner of things. Fearless people. People whose heart has been given over to reprobateness. Re reprobateness. My English teacher, am I correct? Thank you. I will tell you of the grace. There is a grace in the book of Titus. The grace of God has appeared to all men. Who has that Bible verse? If you show it, just flash it to me. Titus chapter 2 is chapter Titus chapter 2, verse 11. It's the grace of God. Hey, that is the kind of grace that I know. Not the grace that will make you to touch to touch woman. Not the kind of grace that will make you to touch things that are that are that are that are, that are, that are abomination before God. Not the grace that makes you to speak in tongues and you are so unrighteous. Come on, who is there? The grace of God has appeared to all men. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Help me, please. God bless you. I'm, 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 I'm burning here. For the grace of God that brings salvation. Ushe, thank you so much, Bumi. God bless you. You cannot rise above your prayer life. Yes, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. And I want to hear the next one. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching. Hey, come on now. Come on now. Teaching. Okay? Thank you. The Lord bless you. And most of the grace that my generation have is not the kind of grace that teaches them. Mm. It's the kind of grace that they think that they can hide. They can, they can hide their, 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 their lies. They can hide their dirty linen. They can, excuse, they can excuse their weaknesses before God. This kind of grace comes with passion. It comes with Cain. He comes and judges everything. He, he, he's a jealous God. He frowns at everything and he brings it out. Grace of God in action will show you that God is a farmer. He plows everything out. He removes everything outside. He's not a judge that puts every, every file under, under the carpet. No. He said, teaching us that denying of godliness, are you, are you seeing that? And worldly lost, we should live soberly, we should live righteously, we should live godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, this is the kind of grace that will deliver you 
from sexuality. I go to number four. And you cross over to uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 50. You will see number four there. Number, verse 52, rather. And Jesus increased in wisdom. That is the fourth one that will make you overcome scandal. Increasing in wisdom. A lot of children of God, they are not wise. They are smart. They are not wise. There are two different things. Wisdom is a persona. Wisdom is the person of Christ in a man, such that they will look for your word. They will not catch. You, did you hear what, what we read about Jesus in Luke chapter 20, verse 20? They looked for his word. They looked for you that they want, they want to catch you like this, and they just sat flatly on your table. Oh, madam, you look beautiful. Oh, madam, you look wonderful. And all your head, all your head is spinning, and you don't know that they've gotten you. You don't know that you have left your guard down. You've left your God down. You see, but when the spirit of God is in you and you increase in wisdom, you will know that that man, when he says, I love you, you will know that. You will know that he's lying. When that woman says, I love you, you know, he's lying. You see, that dimension will come out of you. It's not some goose pimples. It's the power of God that will come out of you. TPT says, God bless you, Lola. God's miraculous grace has manifested in person. Hey, you people. Kaya, kaya, kaya. The way I am, I can disappear from here. Bringing salvation from every, for everyone, the same grace teaches us how to live. Oshe, God bless you. How to live each day, dailydying.com. As we turn our back on ungodliness and in indulgent lifestyle. Are you seeing that? And it equips us to live self. To live self control. This is not a word that is familiar with my generation. To be upright, to be godly lives in this present age. For we continue to look forward to the joyful fulfillment of our hope in the dawning splendor of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus, the anointed one. God bless you, Lola. God bless you so much. Come on now. You see, to increase in wisdom is for the person of wisdom to come in you such that you will be in a place and your fault will not be found. Your fault will not be found. You see, even if your fault is on ground like this, they'll be looking for you, they won't find it because <laughs> blessed is the man whose sins are covered by the Lord. But the one that covers his sins shall not prosper. See, there are two things. There are two different things. Oh, Lord God Almighty, help me. Oh, what will deliver you from slander is when you come to the full stature. Because that was what happened to the boy. He said he increased in wisdom. The next one, he said, and stature. What is stature? Stature is the full measure of the knowledge of Christ. Come on. Can anybody bring up that verse that talks about coming to the full stature that dwell bodily in all things? That is the stature that God wants us to come into. And what brings you into that stature is daily dying. Daily dying. And the favor of God. He found favor with God and with man. That is what delivers you from the strivings of men. When you find favor with God first and then with man. A lot of us, we've, we've lost favor with God. We are just looking for favor with man. What my boss will write in my appraiser. What my boss, he, he, if he likes, he should fail me in appraiser. Everything that you hold dearly in the world today, not too long from now, when you leave the world, you will leave them behind. Everything that is of a concern to you today, by tomorrow, it will not be of concern and again, your prayer point today will be thanksgiving tomorrow. It turns out like that all the time. Thank you, Tolu. Till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we, who are the we remnant, should no longer be children, not children as in children. Because you must be a child to enter the kingdom. But he's saying here, children in malice, children in, in, in things that should not be heard among us, toasts, to and fro. That is the part of a child that they say you should not become. And carried about by every wind of doctrine. They say there is no Jesus today. You say, eh. They say there is, there is this today. You say, eh. You say all this miracle that they are even doing. Say, we don't even know whether it's true. You, eh. you are the one that will put your mouth by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. You see, by the time this deliverance is done, 
We are talking of authority, Abby. See how we have, we have talked about the 666 syndrome. You must be delivered. It is called dailydying.com. There is a daily register that is measured in heaven. Men in this generation, they die monthly. They die weekly. They die... They, hey. When God expects you to die hourly, he expects you to die daily. When this deliverance has happened, I'm talking about remnants, how they ascend into authority. When this deliverance happened, then four things will happen. Encounter. They will have encounter. Because there is no smoke without fire. They will have encounter. Dimensions, things that they cannot explain with logic. Because at this point, they would have been delivered from themselves. So they are not reasoning from logic. They are not reasoning from capacity of, of their own, of their own uh, 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 intellectual brain. They are... They, Things will begin to happen around them that they will not be able to explain by logic. These are encounters. How do you explain a bush that is burning? And yet, the bush, the content of that bush, the identity of that bush, of the grasses there, were still, was still intact. When the bush burns, it becomes burnt. But this bush, as, the, as it was burning, he still retained his identity. How do you explain that? When you see a snake on the ground, logic says you hold it by the head because the tail is where the power of that snake is. It's where the venom is. Hey, God said, Moses, hold a snake by the tail. How do you explain that? How do you explain God telling Moses to put his hand in his armpit and bringing it out? The hand became lepros, leprotic. It, it, became like, it became like that of a leper. And he said, put it back. And it became clean. How do you explain? All those things were encountered. God will begin to bring the remnants into a place where they will collide with supernatural dimension. That's why he's saying that I should, we should go ahead by the message of God to conduct healing meetings. Healing meetings that it will, it will be clear to all men that God is not a bragadabla. That the power of God is alive. Testimonies. Someone on Friday that had, that had, he had someone that had a, a, a wound that, 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 that seemed incurable. They've, 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 they've done everything to that wound. wound. The wound wouldn't go. It said by Saturday or Monday morning, if I, if I still remember correctly, the wound got dried up completely, completely dried up. That's the power of God. I can go on and on. Because you have to be weaned off all the lies, all the fear. You have to know that you have a heritage. The power of God is the heritage. It's alive and it's well. Encounter. Remnant cannot do without encounter. Remnant must, must know that it is part of our call. It is part of our ascension to authority. It is part of our framework. These are things that will make us know that when we count our blessing, we will count it wise. The God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. I tell you the truth. There are certain dimensions in God that your brain will shut down thinking of it. Your brain will shut down completely. I always tell people when I, when I, when I talk about some things, it looks so impossible. It, it looks so unthinkable. But the power of God has shown me that in this life, if I ever doubt God, I'll be judged. I've seen, I've seen things with my eyes that Kai, it is too late for me to doubt God. Too late. I was in my house in January and I saw and I saw a baby dancing in somebody's womb. Dancing, dancing, dancing. And I called the husband. I said, your wife is pregnant. He said, sir, it can't be possible. It, 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 she's not pregnant. I said, it's pregnant. Go to the hospital. Weeks after, they were afraid. They went to the hospital. Two weeks old baby, they picked it. They picked it in the blood. Come on now, what are you talking about? Look great on me. Hey, 
encounter that make you know that this is no other person than God. He, this is God, nobody else except God. And after that encounter, you will now enter into the realm of call. <laughs> hey, call is divided into two types. The first one, there will be no power. There will be no sign. It will just come. Just come like that. No sign. Nothing. People will even try to shut you down. You say, look at him. He's very fragile. He's very frail. <laughs> it looks like there is nothing inside of him. The first time when he say, when he say, when he, <laughs> somebody says an apt word, sir. God bless you. This is truly advancement season in supernatural, confirming the encounters in my dream. Since the last meeting, we push to enter. God bless you, Jennifer. God bless you. God bless you. You see, this is the first time when God appeared to, to Moses. Moses that was very eloquent in speech was not know what the word of God said. The man says, uh, I, 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 I am the, I am the stammerer. Because he knows quite well that there was no conviction. He said, when they ask me who sent me, what do I say? God say, I am that I am. Say, I am that. He didn't even know how to say, I am kata kata. I am that I am. I am that I am. What, what is it? Because there was no sign. He got there and he said, well, the Lord has sent me to you people. He said that he has heard your cry. He said, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. What are you talking about? Then he went back. He said, God, this thing is not working. I said it in December, and everyone that picked a call that is not their own, they will drop it. Say you have been seeing things as things have been happening. It is clear that the uncalled will be doomed in this season. Because you cannot be called if you have not been named. Excuse me, who is here that you call somebody and the person has no name? So raise up your hand, please. If you know, if you call somebody that has no name, whatever you call must be named. Bible says in Isaiah chapter 61, if I'm correct, I still read it to someone yesterday. Isaiah chapter 61, he said you shall be named first before you are called because you must be named first. You cannot, you see, everyone must name you before the earth can call you. Isaiah chapter 61, he said, but you shall be named the priest of our Lord. That's the name that God has called remnants. Because it's one of your divine priestly assignment to raise altar. After raising men, after raising sons, you must have that capacity to raise altar. But you shall be named the priests of our Lord. And they, who are the they? The people of the earth. They will then call you. Nobody can call you if you have not been named. That's why I always tell people, get your calling from eternity into time. Don't come here thinking, am I able? People, people look at their call uh, like gifts. You say, eh, because I can pray. Hey, maybe, maybe I'm an intercessor because I see it has nothing to do with your gifts. Do you see? It has nothing to do with your gift. It has everything to do with the territory that God has given to you. Are you giving a local territory to, to, to chart the course for your family? Are you giving a national territory to chart the course for your nation? Are you giving a continental territory to be a watchman? Are you giving a global territory? These are the dimensions that makes your call an election show, not your gift. You cannot know your calling by your gift. Stop that. It is a wrong order. That's why most churches, they are built on gifts. It is a wrong order. So the day the gift is not there, or the day the gift does not come out, then there is a problem. This is how the formation of the army is made. By your encounter, you will know your call. Come on now. By your encounter, you will enter into your call. And your call will bring you into your battalion. It will bring you into your team, your dimension. You will know, are you an archer? Are you a, are you a sniper? Are you an espionage? Are you a seal? Are, who are you? You see, it will begin to come out. And the final call 
The final call is the one after God has seen you. After he has seen your faithfulness, the ability, your ability to trust him and how you have submitted, I will, I will get to that very soon. He will, then, he will then call you and say, come, I want to send you to a people that are cocky, to a stiff man. He will say, by this time, I have given you power so you can go and, and because, ah, come on now, listen to me. There is a dimension of power that we must have to change the heart of men. Quote me anywhere. There is a dimension of power that you must carry to make men listen to you. I don't care who you are if you don't have that dimension and you cannot have that dimension in time. No, you cannot. You cannot because this kind of dimension, they don't work in time. They work from eternity to time. Oh, for whatever God does, it remains forever. Nothing can be taken from it. Nothing can be added to it. God does it that man should fear before him. And known to God are his works from eternity. I said encounter is when you, 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 you have experience that your brain cannot describe. That's what I call encounter. Your brain cannot, you, your brain cannot explain it. You will know that this is God. And I gave an example of how God showed himself to, 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 to Moses. How do you explain those things that happened? You see, any experience you have, and you can still speak English, forget it, you have not seen anything. Oh, Hey. Any experience you have, and you are still speaking drama, grammar, you, can, you don't. <laughs> this, this, this dimension of encounter that you will talk from night to the morning, your body will be shaking, nobody will be able to deliver you. You will fall and rise, fall and rise in your room. What is happening? Who touched me? Who touched me? Hey. All the way from the UK, somebody was praying and saying, God, every the, the thing that you've called Daniel Bello into, I tap into it, I tap into it, I tap into it, and I stood up from my dream. I screamed, Who touched me? Who touched me? I couldn't sleep. Who touched me? Who is roughing my water? Who is who is calling me? I don't pay me. I wrote it in my DP. People were saying, ah, Jesus, Jesus said it. People were like, in my mind, I said, this is not a talking matter. Because during my sleep went away from me. This person was making every demand on heaven, on my life. And as I was about going back to bed around 3 a.m., the person chatted me. And he said, I'll be praying. I said, so it's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. Receive it. And that was it. Pa, pa, hey, everywhere. Everywhere was on fire there. Oh. You can't, you can't. You can. There are some touch that when you touch, God does not even know that you are touching. Hey, but there are some touch. Come on now. Come on, come on, come on. Even the disciples that had been with Jesus for so long, they, they that had been with Jesus for so long, they did not know that somebody touched Jesus. Hey, but that woman. Hey, man. Hey, hey, just in Tokai, these are dimensions that come from your spirit to the spirit of Jesus. She was saying in her heart, she did not say it out. If I but touch the hell, uh, he said, Somebody, hey, the others, they said, Jesus, but you are in the midst of crap. You see, everything that you can explain in English, forget it, I've told you. How do you explain it? The woman right in her heart and Jesus stopping. How, how do you explain that? I'm not talking telepathy. I'm not talking that. What name have you called Jesus that heaven stood still? And when you date him, there are deep things, deep revelations. This language that I'm calling, that's the meaning. The, see, even a blind man knew the name he could call Jesus that could make heaven to stand still. Those that had eyes, they didn't know. Jesus, son of David. 
<laughs> and Jesus said, eh, when, when David said, my Lord said unto my Lord, who was older? Who was he referring to? Before you say, I'm a son of David, is I, am I the son or David is, is, my, is the son? Son of David. Hey, those that did not know the name, come on, shut up. You do not know one. Do you think Jesus is looking for people like you? Is that not what we say? Jesus is looking for you. When Jesus is looking for governor, Jesus is looking for quality souls, souls that are in the, in, in the Koyu, souls that are in, in Lekki, souls that are quality souls. You, you, you are in Abaranje, you are saying Jesus, Jesus, I cannot just keep your mouth shut. He cried him out. Jesus, son of David, heaven stood still. Even Peter, everybody with every, with every title that they had, Second, right reverend, ring leader, all the names, they could not know that dimension. A Bartholomew work. Be careful. Encounter do, does not respect hierarchy. Encounter they does not respect title. That's what I want to say. Encounter does not respect title. And in that encounter, you have a call. The first call. He looks like, just go, go and say the word. They won't listen to you, but go. And he comes back and says, the second one, ah, I have, I have tested you. I have seen that even as you did not have the power, you said it. I told you to say it, you said it. How many times have you said something that God asked you to say and the thing did not come to pass? If you are, if you are like that, just raise up your hand. I, I just want somebody to raise up his hand, please. If you are like that. I know some of you will not say, hmm. Is anybody raising up his hand? God that sent you to somebody before. Sent you to somebody and you say everything and the thing did not come to Thank you, Jare, my sister. Some people, everybody, uh, me, that's happened to me. That's happened to me when I was young. You will say, thank you, Jennifer. You will say it like this. You will say, people will say, eh, I don't think it's me. And then you will doubt yourself. Those times, the remnant is being formed. Hey, come on. The, the believer is being formed. The dimension of commission is being formed inside of you. Where you, you see, what, what you call faith is doubting yourself. Ah, you, eh, eh, did I hear? Did I not hear? That thing is being formed. It's being formed. You are going from glory to glory. You are in the valley of Baca. At that point, you, are, you don't know. Eh? They told Moses, oh, when, what are you saying? Brother, what are you saying? What are you talking about? Eh, I am that I am. I am. I am that I am. You are not different from Abracadabra. You are not different from I am Atanga. I am that I am. Who exactly sent you? And he went back. And God said, "You know what? I have tested you now. Now I know that you can carry my banner to anywhere. Now take the power. Go and change men. I will make them ten times mad, and you will rot miracles." There are some miracles that need to come out of you. There are some miracles that need to be powered out so that you and your entire family will know that there is God in them that cannot be compared to any God of your fathers. Mm. Then the third one, empowerment. Empowerment. And this is where my generation, this is where they enjoy the most. Ah, oh, fair, bad, bad, oh. The meaning is, I want to receive power. Don't give me power. 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 People have prayed and prayed. The most, the, in fact, the most, in fact, if there is any prayer point that people have prayed the most, is power. Power. Power for what? Whenever you see dimension and outpouring of power, know that there is a responsibility around the corner. <laughs> And in between, the power and the responsibility will be abundance so that you can begin to care for the feeble and the vulnerable among you before true revival will hit. And that is the dimension that is happening. That is it. For the past weeks now, you see people, you, you will see, even yourself, you will see that you are heavy under the power. You are heavy. Sometimes you'll be drunk. Sometimes you, you'll not be able to walk. <laughs> Empowerment. But be very careful. Don't settle here. Don't stay here. Okay? Because this is not the destination. This place is a pass-through because power cannot make you righteous. Power cannot bring provision of heaven down to the earth for you. Power cannot bring you into the full maturity of God's authority. Power, you can have power and still deny Christ. You can have power and still betray God, eh, Jesus. It happened to Judas Iscariot. He gave them power, all the twelve. 
He gave them power. But the power couldn't save Judas from denying Christ. Oh, but this is where I'm going. <laughs> Commission. Ay, 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 ay. Commission. Commission. Commission comes with separation. Commission comes with consecration. Commission comes with setting apart. Commission comes with sanctification. That is the part of, this, of, the, of the preaching that we don't hear anymore. Sanctification. That you are set apart. Daily dying to, to your flesh. You are set apart to God. Following Jesus and deciding to do his will even if you die. The 12 were empowered, but the 11 were commissioned. That's the difference. Uh, that's the difference. He said, everyone that you have given to me, I have kept except the son of perdition. Sons of perdition are not commissioned. For you to be commissioned, you have to wait. Come on now. You have to wait in the place. It might be 30 years. Jesus was 30 years. David was 30 years. Joseph was 30 years. You will stay in the place. You must be commissioned. Because if you are not commissioned, you cannot be battered. You cannot. The height of birthing, the height of commission is birthing. Immediately, Jesus clocked 30 and he was baptized. Oh, a voice came and said, this is my beloved son. He birthed him right there. He whom I am well pleased. Someone bring that up. If that birthing came right there, and if you are not birthed, you will not be registered. I always say there is registration to these things. Oh, there is registration. Hebrew chapter 12. Let me show you my registration. I have a registration number. If you doubt me, follow me to Hebrews chapter 12. It says, and I quote, verse 22, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to, a, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, who are what? Registered in heaven. This is not INEC registration. This is not census registration. This is heavenly census registration. The, the numbering of the saints. He said, I did not count you you are numbered. He said he has numbered. You see, you see, he said the, the, the number, I have numbered your very hair. You see, there is difference between numbering and counting. When you count, you say there are 33 things. When you number, you say that is number 33. There is different. Oh, Lord God Almighty. You are numbered. You are not counted. You are numbered because you are birthed. And when you are birthed, you are commissioned. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you are, and when you are numbered, you are registered. When you are, uh, when you are birthed, you are numbered. When you are numbered, you are registered. Then resource allocation is given to you. They allocate a portion of your angel, a portion of your meal, a portion of your water, a portion of your face, a portion. They allocate that resources. How do I know? Immediately that allocation happens in heaven, your account will be opened. Come on now. For Abraham believed God and he was credited unto him righteousness. Anyone that has that should bring it up. Abraham believed in God and he was credited. There is a crediting of your account. And you know, if there is no credit, there can be a corresponding debit. You don't, you don't. That's why most of our faith, they lack, they lack debt because we debit, we debit, we lay demand on heaven when we are, we are not yet proven. I was talking to one of my friends. I wanted to cry. I said, my heart is with you. Is your heart with me? We are not talking sensuality here. We are not talking sensationalism here. We are delivered from ourselves. Let's talk. Let's talk to ourselves as, as the language of the spirit. David told Jonathan, my heart is with you. As your heart is with me. To people that are unwise, they will say that is gay. That is rubbish. There is a love. There is a depth of love in God that will make you to prove yourself. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Prove your own self. No, ye, prove yourself. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You don't lay claim 
on heaven when you have not proven yourself. You are using faith that you have not, you have not, you have not credited. You have not credited with your, with, with, your, with your daily devotion. You have not credited with your daily dying. You have not credited with your consecration. You lie at every point. You betray. You, 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 it's easy for you to compromise at every point. You, anything that, that, that makes you very tight, you don't want it. Anything that makes you difficult or put you in a very, in very uncomfortable position, you don't want it. Hey, oh my God. Oh. You cry for bread at every point in time. Even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him. Hey, let me look for the Bible verse that says credited to him. Credited to his account. And when that crediting happens, oh, the drawdown, the supply of the Spirit of Jesus will come to you. That is the, that is, that is, that is the credit. That is the resource allocation. The supply of the Spirit of Jesus. Anyone that has that should bring it up. The supply of the Spirit. See, my, my Spirit is just bringing Bible, Bible vats. It's just bringing Bible. That, that, is, that, that is the union, that is, that is the unity of, of, of command in the Spirit. And when the supply of Jesus comes to you, eh, eh, Thank you very much, Jadi. Jadi, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, the Lord bless you. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Yes, yes. Yeah, another one says, Abraham believed in, affirmed, trusted in, and relied on, remained steadfast to the Lord and he counted, credited it to him as righteousness. Doing right in regard to God and man. Oh, what account do you have in heaven? What credit do you have there so that you can draw your debit down? Come on now. He said, for I know that this will turn out to my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of the spirit of Jesus. Some of us, we are not familiar with this elemental forces. We are not familiar with this structure. This is what makes you make something out of nothing, my brother. This is the miraculous. And everyone thinks naturally from the miraculous position. When you enter into the submission realm, into the into the commission realm, oh my re, that's what Yoruba say. You 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 will submit. Come on now. He says, submit yourself under the mighty hands of God that He might exhort you in due season. Then resist the devil. Submission. Submission will teach you your boundary. Submission will teach you your border. Submission will teach you discipline. We lack it in this generation. We lack it. Everything the eyes want, the hand must touch. Everything the heart craves for, the, the leg must go for. You don't have any restriction. You don't have any, 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 any discipline at all. Anything you go for. You don't have a car, you cry. Your car breaks down, you start, you can't trek. I don't, I don't understand this generation. As if, as if these things, you won't leave them. Strip everything away from you. That's why a lot of people will be, will be, will be, will be, will, 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 will be psychophantic in office just because of appraiser, just because, just because of the word of man. Take everything if you want to take it. Come and meet me two years after. Boundary, borders, discipline. Can you stay in the place of prayer more than 30 minutes? What you read? Mm. You want to pray like this as you need that. Some people, if, if they've been looking for sleep and they can't find, let them kneel down. Put up, they start sleeping. If they want to sleep, they will even be boasting that, oh, give me that Bible. Once I open Bible like this, I'll just be sleeping. Hmm. And, you, and you want to compete with the darkness of this world. You want to compete and beat men, men that are cunning and crafty in their ways. And you enter into the submission realm. Submission realm will take you into one place. It will take you into the place of process. Ah, you will see trials. You will see temptation. Kaya. Temptation will not stop. Come on now. Temptation will not stop because it's one of the legalities of the devil. Temptation will not stop. But... When you enter into the place of submission, like Jesus, after he, after he was baptized, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be what? 
tempted of the devil and he returned in the power of that spirit. It is whatever you are delivered from that you can rise above. You cannot rise above the temptation you have not conquered. And for every temptation you have not conquered, it's a, it's a terrain and a land that you, you, are, you are losing. And it may make your children to suffer. Honest. And Daniel must go, go through the three Hebrews, the three Hebrew boys must go through the furnace of fire. They will sit down there and say, God, is this how your righteousness is? They told me that I will never suffer. How we never suffer? That's one song that my father in the Lord always sing. If you want to, if you want to laugh at this generation, say, How we never suffer, Jesus suffer for me. How we never suffer, Jesus suffer from you. We'll be singing and be putting on all, 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 all manner of, you see, <laughs> God, God of my father. They didn't, they didn't go into that furnace. Like Paul and Silas at midnight, they raised up their voice and they started singing. I started singing. They started singing. They started singing. They started singing. They sang to a point that heavenly host came down to worship with them. Because how do I know? The land, the ground was shaking. Everywhere was shaking. Ah, everyone cannot worship with you and, 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 and the environment uh, will, will not tremble. Mm. I, I, I always, I always, I always, I, I'm always careful of the power that, that makes you to brag. I'm always careful of the power and the authority that does not bring you to a place of submission and process. If Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit can return in the wilderness and was and was and was led and returned from Jordan and was led, he was filled though, by the Spirit. And the first place the Spirit led him to, ah, if it is you that you are filled by filled with the Spirit, the first place he will lead you to is to be healing the sick, to be raising the dead. Have you heard it? But look at your father, look at Jesus, look at your 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 the firstborn among among brethren. Look at look at him and follow him and imitate him. He being filled. With the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by that Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for forty days, process by the devil. It is you. You will say, "Oh, this power that is on me is for profit." The Holy Spirit does not give you some more power. You see, that's that's it. I've told you before. The secret to healing power is for you to forgive much. Once you start forgiving much. You can raise the dead. Submission, real submission, brings genuine power. No power that brags. And I will show people that I belong to Jesus today, tomorrow, and next tomorrow. Nonsense. Nonsense. Your kind of power that, that can't say sorry. And if there's any devil, I cannot. Oh, uh, my show. Process. Furnace. Caves. David, with every anointing that Samuel had placed on him, will still run into the cave of Adullam. Running from his worst nightmare, his mentor that became a tormentor, Saul. You, you don't know cave. Persecution and prosecution. That they bring you before men. And they castigate you. That's when you'll be saying, I have never, have never been soiled before. Nobody can tarnish my image. I've told people, me, I don't have image. Oh. All everybody that has image, well done, no. Oh. Uh, me, I don't have image. The only image that I have is the image of the Son of God. I don't have any image of myself. I've lost my image. So if you like, drag it on the ground. You don't, you, I don't even have anything. Try fighting with a man that is naked. Just try fighting with a man that before he start fighting, he has, he has daggered himself many places. You will know that. Oh, no, 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 my God. Don't have any image. I've lost my image to Jesus. See, we tarnish my image. We tarnish my image. I stand for integrity. Um, I stand for Jesus who, and his righteousness. That's what I stand for. See, when all these things happen, you will begin to enter into steadfastness of faith. Being steadfast in the faith. You're steadfast in the faith. Without trophy. 
You see, steadfastness talks of lifestyle. Steadfastness, whether they are watching you or they are not watching you, you can pray for as many hours. You can, you can, you can be in the presence of God, not because of trophy, not because oh no, 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 no. You, you are just serving God for the pleasure of Jesus, by Jesus, to Jesus, for Jesus alone. However, it wants to turn your life, you should turn it around. Praise God. They resist the devil, being steadfast in faith. Ah. They told me to stop. <laughs> they told me to stop. How many of you want this authority? Authority that will bring you into a place of encounter. That will bring you into a place of call. That will bring you into a place of empowerment. That will bring you into a place of commissioning. That will, that will make you to be parted. That will make you to be numbered. That will make you to be registered. That will make heaven to give you resource allocation. That will make your account in heaven to be credited. And will give you accessibility to draw down the supply of the spirit of Jesus down to the earth. So that you can make something out of nothing to the glory of God. And it will bring you to the place of submission. Through process, you will walk from during the you will walk through the valley of Baca, and with your tears, you will make it a, a, a pool, and you will begin to go from strength to strength. You will be strong in Zion. Receive it today in the name of Jesus. I give it to you by the strength of the Father in the name of Jesus. That character will be formed in you. That faith will rise in you. That steadfastness will come upon you. The steadfast of faith will come upon you in the name of Jesus and the image of the Father will come upon you from today in the name of Jesus. And you begin to know your, 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 your clan. You begin to know your hierarchy in the spirit. You will come to a place where you will be prepared and you will not be afraid. You will not be hiding behind your call. You will not be hiding behind your gift. You will not be hiding behind anything. I charge you today in the name of Jesus. The, the environment of God, the energy of God will power your atmosphere from today in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. You are divinely implicated in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, as I started praying, your hand began, began to, your hand started becoming hot. Where are you? Raise up your hand. Your hand was hot. It was hot. Your, not, not your environment, now your palm. It was very hot. Where are you? I have a word of the Lord for you. Because this age and this era that we are in, the dimension of God will never go unnoticed upon the life that he has, he has, he has, he has faced. That from today, I declare that every one that is here, hearing the sound of my voice, the energy of God will take you over. If you don't raise up your hand, I won't give that word. The energy of God will take you over from today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You belong to Jesus from today and the energy of God will come upon you in the name of Jesus. Your atmosphere will be charged ten times over in the name of Jesus Christ. I set your eyes on fire. I set your ears on fire. I cause your ears to pop up, to pop up right now. I make your heart to yearn after righteousness, after godliness. I plunge the power and the fire of God right into your heart. I bring the conscience of God alive in your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right now, receive the tangibility of the things that are said in the name of Jesus. Where are you? Your eyes, your ears, your heart. You felt something. Where are you? Your palm 
in the name of Jesus. Hear the word of a living God. You that had the, the fire in your palm, the Lord is saying to me that from today, you are cultured. The culture of God will remain your atmosphere. The badge of God's culture falls on you from today. You will be cultured by him. You will walk within his boundary. You will walk within his capacity. And from now, your smallness will become big. He will build your stature every day in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, someone said, my body, someone, when I say, raise up your hand, someone raise, raised up, Jade uh, Vincent, yes, I saw a hand, if he, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, this operation will be total, this operation will be full, this operation will be final, you will enter into stature, receive the stature, receive the stature, the stature that brings you into submission, the stature that brings you into steadfastness, the stature that makes you to know your battalion and the spirit, receive it in the name of Jesus. Somebody's tummy is turning, 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 is turning in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Someone is a sensation in your left palm. Receive every, see, every dimension of the authority of remnants. They will not go back to heaven. No, I release everything. I release everything upon you like oil of Aaron that flow from his head to his beard to his skirts. The talks of completion, his talk of completeness. You will walk in the fullness. Some people receive, some people are filled, but from today, you are full. You are full. You are full. You are full. You you are full, you are full, you are full, you are full. Tina, receive it in the name of Jesus. I don't know if anybody's around her there. You are full in the name of Jesus. You are full, 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 you are full in the name of Jesus. I turn your environment into the miraculous. I turn your environment into the miraculous. In that name of Jesus, is anybody here bearing Emmanuel wherever you are? Emmanuel, in the name of Jesus Christ. To look through the names for me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the power of Jesus come upon you. Energy of Jesus, like you have never seen before. Energy of Jesus. Is there Emmanuel here? Energy of Jesus to come upon you. I hear that name in my ears. In the name of Jesus, receive it. You will think from the miraculous from today. You will think, you will think, you will think from the miraculous in the name of Jesus. He uh, is not here. He, he, he was here before, but wherever he is right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh, man, receive it. Every one of you right now, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. What is coming upon you now is a power of righteousness. It will go down inside of you and take root in you. It is the miraculous power of righteousness. You will be holy. You will belong to Jesus. You will serve God. You will die daily. You will not compromise in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Yes. Yes, woman. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Kaburuna Sali Barabos. Your name is God. He limarano si barano saya. Emmanuel, oh Emmanuel. Oh, he's here, people. Emmanuel, your name is good. Emmanuel. Somebody's tongue is set on fire. 
and that tongue. God is regulating your speech from today because he knows that people will come and they want to take your words. In two weeks from now, somebody will say something in your office, in your place of work, in your place of abode. They want to catch your word. But from today, the fire of God is upon your tongue and is regulating it. By the time these people come and they want to do any harm to you by making sure that they still serve you flattery. So to the point that you will start talking, 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 your tongue will, will, will be sealed. You will be able to raise your tongue. You will be able to raise your tongue. And if you raise your voice, your voice will be taken. I declare in the name of Jesus, the power of God, come upon your tongue to regulate you today. In the name of Jesus, I shut down hell in your tongue. In the name of Jesus, I release you to the miraculous. You will think from the miraculous. Miraculous things will start happening in your, in your family, in your life. It will start happening because you must be wired to the miraculous. You must be delivered from your five ten senses. You must, you must enter into the, the realm of eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it come into the heart of man. You, I plug you into that miraculous. It will be natural for you from today in the name of Jesus. You won't be confused. You will know where you fall. You will know where you stand. You will know your hierarchy. You won't choose your team in the spirit by your by your by your by your by your by your gifts anymore. No, your territory will be open to you. You will know whether you are for your family, whether you are for your nation, whether you are for your continent, whether you are for the for the for the for the world, and there is no difference. One is not superior to the other. This is where this is where remnants will arise and they will compensate one another in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And they will and they will be compatible, they will complement rather, they will complement one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Oh Farabala I don't usually do this, but if there's anybody that wants to share anything that happened, I don't always do this for evenings. I do it in details, but I don't do it. But the Spirit said I should allow one or two people, just not more than two people, have something to say that happened to you that you think you, you want to share. The person raising up his hand, do you want to say something? Yes, sir. Good Go ahead. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I, it's so interesting because um, a few days ago, I, I had a dream. And um, uh, in, in the dream, I, I, I found myself teleporting. You know, it was so powerful. I mean, like I could literally... Um, all I needed to do was I would think about a place. It looked like Google Map, like you know when you're going somewhere on Taxify and you mm -hmm. put the location of where you're going. So yes. literally, I could just imagine the place as a Google Map, the location, and I would appear there. You know, and um, in fact, there was one time, sir. See, your energy, the spirit, is turning from potential to kinetic. You are wow. getting very, very strong in the shortest time possible. I was looking for an Emmanuel, and you are the one. You see, your energy, I can see eh, joy from heaven, not happiness. I'm not talking happiness. It's transporting you. See, when energy is kinetic, it does not stay. It's not latent. You see, men will know to, that it will be evident to everyone around you that you have, you have, you have been with Jesus. Tell him. Man, it's so powerful, sir. So powerful. I mean, I mean, I, there was a time I was I was trying to transport myself, and I thought of two two different locations, but I couldn't go because it was like a clash of locations. <laughs> I mean, it was powerful. It was powerful. It's powerful. Yes, sir. I just thought I should share that. Lord bless you. The 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 Lord bless you. Um, Lola says, my chest feels so full, it's like about to explode. And, and someone said, exactly, I, I know that something is happening. But is there anybody that wants to say something again? 
Yes, Tina, I know you received something. I know you received something. Someone says, apologies, sir. I can't speak where I am. My body temperature changed as you prayed. And I can feel an electric sensation in my feet. Bless you. Someone said, I still feel woozy and weak. My tummy is churning. Um, I want to read what Tina sent. Tina said, I fell. And my entire body shaking. And like something hit my inner stomach. That was the lady I said, I hope somebody is around her. No, somebody, something happened to you. See, people, remnants are flying from today. I tell you the truth. Remnants are flying from today. They will locate where they fall in the hierarchy. You will not be confused anymore, okay? You will not be confused anymore. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Lord bless you. 